Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be discussing a very important topic and that is neck pain in our furry friends. Neck pain in our dogs can be caused by a variety of different reasons, but it's important to distinguish what those reasons are so we can give them the right help as soon as possible. So once again, I'm Adam and this is my trusty sidekick, Bo. Let's dive in. Neck pain in dogs can be caused by a variety of different reasons. Some of them can be very simple, such as uh, slip and fall causing an injury. Others can be a little bit more alarming, such as an infection or other underlying medical conditions that can cause some of these symptoms. Some of the more common things that we find are muscle strains and joint sprains. So that's the, one of the most common things. And I've already done a video before on this topic to help you determine what that is, there'll be a link above and I'll put it down in the description so you can check that out. And it will really help you to do a quick assessment on your dog. More complicated mechanical type injuries are things like disc injuries or disc herniations, where it's having, having a bit of a neurological involvement. Uh, and then things like fractures uh, is also very uh, bad as well. And you wanna rule that out, but those are mechanical type injuries. And then you have more sinister type uh, issues that can cause neck pains and conditions. Things like space occupying lesions, for example, would be a tumor. So if there's a tumor growing on uh, part of the neck or the spinal cord, or if there is a tumor on the brain, this can cause a lot of issues, but they usually have other symptoms with it. So we're gonna discuss that in a little bit more detail. And then finally, things like infections or uh, you know vector-borne illnesses like Lyme's disease. These are things that can also cause symptoms in your dog that may at first look like a sprain or a strain, but really you should be going to your vet to get this looked at right away. So let's dive in a little bit more detail how we can distinguish what some of these symptoms are so you can make the right decision for your dog. To dive into the first symptoms that you might see and it might alert you to something are things like limping, for example. That's the telltale sign that something's happening. It's hard to miss, so uh, make sure you're looking out for that. Now the next step for what you should be really doing is palpating your dog seeing if there's any areas that are very sensitive or if they just don't wanna be touched. And if that is something out of the ordinary, you know they've clearly injured an area, then you can locate specifically what area is actually involved. Another thing that can stand out, but you know sometimes it's, it's missed, is when the dog's behavior slightly changes in terms of things that they normally do. So whether that's jumping in and out of the car, going up and down stairs, on and off furniture, they might hesitate and uh, second guess themselves or they might wait for you to come and help them. Uh, and that's usually a sign that uh, they're in a bit of pain and discomfort and another telltale sign that I think is highly missed is when your dog goes out and exercises and they seem completely normal but they come back they rest and when they get up they're showing some of the symptoms that I just previously mentioned um, that's usually a sign that it's not bad enough that it's stopping them from doing much many things however when they use it it's causing irritation and, and therefore stiffness and inflammation so that's something that should be addressed and figure out what that root cause is now finally the last thing you can do that's so simple to do at home is check the range of motion of your dog's neck they should have a really good range of motion. I will link another video up above that has the range of motion test, which takes, you know, 10 to 15 seconds to check on your dog. Uh, but it gives you a lot of value in terms of what it can show and to see if there's any limitations in that range of motion in your dog's neck. Now, a couple other things you can do if you're thinking there's more of a neurological component to it, or if you're thinking that um, there's a potential uh, for that and you wanna rule that out, uh, is you can check some of their sensitivity. So the first thing you can do is pinch between the uh, webbing in their paw and they should do a withdrawal reflex. So you can see how Bo pulls that right away. Now he wants to lay down because he doesn't want me to do it again. But a dog should naturally pull away. They should have that feeling. You shouldn't have to pinch too hard. Another thing you can do is do the, what's called the writing reflex. And the, oh, you wanna shake a paw? Okay, good boy. The writing reflex is where you put their paw on the top side of their paw down and naturally they should write their paw back where the pad is down on the ground. And as you can see, Bo doesn't even let me put his uh, paw upside down because he wants to write it right away. He doesn't even want it there. So as dogs age, it might be a little bit slower and more delayed. However, it should always come back to um, the pad down. And then the last thing you can do, and you can do this for kind of see what their balance is like, is the hopping test. And when we do this, you hold up one leg and you want to move them side to side and they should rewrite their opposite leg and plant it. Uh, and that way they're going to show you that they have a good balance and coordination. 
So if any of those they can't do, then you should definitely go have somebody look at that like your vet and go make sure they're ruling out any neurological issues or complaints going on in the dog. Now, lastly, it goes without saying, if they're having any of the above symptoms that I just talked about, but they're also having some of the following changes to their normal behavior. They're having any head tilt, vertigo type symptoms, uh, or even uh, vomiting, excessive panting, seizures, or significant changes in their dietary behavior or just behavior in general. Then without a doubt, do not hesitate. Go have them looked at by your normal vet determine what is going on and at least rule out some um, severe, more sinister causes. And then you can have everything addressed from a mechanical perspective, but it's always best to get that out of the way just to make sure the coast is clear that we can do some stuff without harm. So with that said, I hope this video helps you solve what's going on in your dog's neck. If they, you think they do have a neck complaint or a neck injury, I think it's important that you take the time to look at your dog and then assess what the best direction, what the best approach is for them moving forward. And it will help you to realize if there is more of an emergency going on so you can get that looked at right away and you don't hesitate.